Okay, so welcome to this module on managing class notes online. This covers a guide to creating, uploading and managing your class notes. A good precursor to this module is module 2. So what are the outcomes of this module? You should be able to identify the benefits of creating notes for your lectures, implement best practice in creating PowerPoint presentations, upload completed lecture notes to the Google site, and publish and manage your lecture notes in Google Sites. So offering notes with lectures minimizes the time spent repeating, guides student learning, allows students to build on prior learning, reduces frustration because students can listen to the lecture, saves time, for example students could fill in semi-completed notes, eliminates rework so absent students can download the notes, and involves all the stakeholders. So for example, parents or administrators can now view your content online. So first of all, we're going to look at making the most of PowerPoint. And we'll cover the following. Limiting, limiting the information on slides. Some quick tips for fonts. Choosing slide backgrounds. Adding notes. Using master slides. Adding images. And some notes about notes. So first of all, let's look at limiting information. It's best to write in bullet form. Use keywords or phrases and avoid writing complete sentences. It's too much for the viewer to take in. A recommended rule is called the 5 to 7 rule. This means no more than 5 to 7 bullets per slide and no more than 5 to 7 words per bullet. So on the left hand side we see we're using bullet points, we have keywords and phrases and we're using the 5 to 7 rule. Whereas on the right hand side, you can see immediately it's very difficult to read because there's too much text and we're not using bullet points. Some quick tips now for fonts. It's good to use greater than 18 point size fonts on slides and greater than 12 point slides, greater than 12 point font in Microsoft Word. You can use bold for titles and headings, plain for the body text, and italics if you want to highlight. Use a consistent font throughout all of your slides. It's suggested that you avoid fonts with serifs, these little uh, ends on the end of a font. So I've shown here a serif font and what's called a sans serif, one without these little ends. Don't use all capital letters, it's very difficult to read. Use simple to, to read fonts and use colours that contrast with the slide background. So on the left hand side again we've shown good practice, we're using a greater than 18 size point form using the same font that are readable and the colours contrast with the background. Whereas on the right hand side we're using a mixture of fonts, font sizes, all capitals, difficult to read fonts. Okay so what about slide backgrounds? Well it's best to choose a simple slide background, use a consistent background on all of your slides and avoid dramatic or busy backgrounds. So on the left hand side, choose simple slides, use a consistent background and on the right hand side some chaotic backgrounds that will detract from the actual text on the slide are shown. What about notes with notes? So in PowerPoint you can use the notes pane to add in additional notes and this can be for your own use to remind you what each slide is about but it also means that when the student downloads, downloads the notes you can make these notes available. So here we see the note pane below the main PowerPoint window. When you type in notes here, they'll be appended to that slide. When the student prints out the slide, we'll see the notes at the bottom underneath each slide. So it's very useful. Master slides allow you to have a consistent theme across your entire presentation. So you can adjust the font, background and footer on the master slide and that means the, all of the slides in the presentation will be automatically updated. To add an image, you can click on the Insert menu, Picture and From File, or if you want to insert clip art, you insert Picture Clip Art. Okay, finally some tips. It's a good idea to provide semi-complete notes. This is good practice. It means that the students have some of the content given to them, but there's some blanks for keywords that they can use. It's a good idea to give an overview of the topics to be covered, so students can plan accordingly and preview their work and list objectives in the lecture introduction. 
you should be thorough but plan for absentees to save time. And it's a good idea to publish your notes online. OK, so now that we have our notes, how do we place them online? Well, we can log into our Google account on Google Sites. In the Google toolbar, you click on Documents, click Upload, locate and select your file, and then click Upload. Upon upload completion, click the blue Share button, and then in the drop-down menu, select Publish as a web page, and this publishes the document. So, here's some screenshots. Step one is to log in, click on Documents, upload your file, save, and then share. OK, so to publish your notes online, you can navigate to your Google site, navigate to the page where you want the file to appear, click on the Edit Page button, place the cursor where you want the document to appear, and now click on Insert Document Spreadsheet or Presentation, whichever type of file you've uploaded. Edit the properties and then save the page. OK, so if we think of the cyclical process, you can create your lecture notes of PowerPoint, you can upload these to Google Sites, and now you can manage your lecture notes on Google Sites using the Google Site tools. So for more information, you can look at these resources. Some Google Sites help, Sites for Teachers, that's a video, the other modules in this website, and uh, maybe a tongue-in-cheek video of what not to do with PowerPoint. Here are some good examples of people who have used Google Sites, so we recommend that you view these.